Hi, I'm David Cooper from ePianos, and today I'm pleased to have with me Helen Porter, and we're going to be looking at the Yamaha YDP-164. Nice to have you with us, Helen. Thank you very much for having me, and I'm looking forward to it. So Helen's a professional musician and piano teacher. Helen, you've been teaching for many years, haven't you? I have, yes. It's uh, 50 years next uh, year. Wow. And, and where did you start off then? How did you start teaching? Uh, in 1972, my professor at the Royal Academy um, told me I should do the teaching qualification anyway, even if I didn't want to. So I did. And I'm very glad I did. I started that year, I think, with a girl next door <coughs> um, in London and found I really enjoyed it. Wow. Your family is full of musicians, aren't they? You're the, the Von Trapp family. <laughs> yeah. So you've got... Um, your daughter's a folk, professional folk musician? Mainly folk, yes. Classical too. She has a string quartet. Um, uh, but she started on the folk scene, yes. Been very busy online. They live in Scotland and they've been doing a lot of things through the Covid situation. Um, but they're all so musicians. She... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's great. So all your music... The musicians of your family, they all fulfil a band then, really? Yeah, we have a family band, yes. We play great. together. So, Helen, you've, you've used digital pianos before, have you? Yes, I've had two different models of the P series um, from you. Yeah, yes. <laughs> With great guidance. Uh -huh. um, and I found them really good for taking out gigging. And I know you play at um, other um, venues. You play uh, music halls and churches, don't you? <laughs> Yes, I've played in many churches in the area, all different. Um, all the touches are different and the stops and everything. Yeah. But you enjoy that? I do very much. I've missed it for a whole year, exactly a year now. Yeah, it's been a strange year, hasn't it? Yeah. The concept of digital pianos, does that, does that bother you as a teacher? Not really, but I think on the, as they get to the higher grades, it's better to have an acoustic piano as they would have probably at an exam and a festival. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, but they're very good for not going out of tune in different temperatures, uh, sp space-wise. A lot of people haven't got space for a, yeah. a large piano. And of course you can use them in the conservatory or you can carry them upstairs and put them in someone's bedroom. Um, yes. So you can move them around much easier. Yes, and you can also put headphones in and do what you like yeah. without people hearing. Or if you want to be in the same room as a, a television, then you can still do it. Yeah, there's lots of benefits. Uh, we're finding now that a lot of people are are going down the digital route because of all those benefits and people like things to be easy and convenient don't they yeah that's true i, I have a people at the moment who's thinking of moving on to a, a better model because it isn't such sensitive and he's up to grade three so i'm going to be thinking about that while i play these pianos excellent that's good so helen this is the ydp 164 which is the the better model in the the lower series called arius and arius have um two versions. They have a slimline version and this is the traditional one, the YDP uh, 164. And, and basically it will give you uh, 10 voices, 20 watt speakers and a nice lid that pulls down, a nice piece of furniture. Um, the first sound, we'll, go, we'll try it out. So the first sound is, is a CFX, it's the nine foot concert grand. So that Yamaha sell it for so many thousand, lots and lots of thousands of pounds, but they've sampled all of the voices and so you're getting it in a um, this is just over a thousand pounds in price, um, so you're getting a lot of piano for your money. But, but have a try, it's the, the Concert Grand Yamaha CFX. Nice. So, what was that called? It's Debussy's uh, Dr. Gradus Ad Pars Parnassum from the Children's Corner Suite. Oh, it's lovely. It's really nice. Um, so, the second sound is going to be a little bit different. That was the Concert Grand CFX Yamaha. The next one will be a different Yamaha, a different piano sound. It's a sample of another piano. So, try the second one, see how that sounds.
Now there's a third piano as well. The third one is more of a uh, sort of Elton John pop grand sound. So perhaps we'll have a listen to the comparison on that as well if you can. different sound altogether isn't it it's a much sort of stringier sound it's got that sort of brightness more of a brightness to it so you've got three pianos which are all uh, effectively acoustic piano sounds um, and then it goes on to some more pianos you've got electric piano sounds so if we try the next one up see what that sounds like The other electric piano is more sort of a belly effect. It's taken from the Yamaha DX series of synthesizers, but it became a sort of cult sound. If you try the next one, it's a bit more sort of Whitney Houston. <laughs> <laughs> So we've got other sounds too that they offer you to. So on this model, if you go to the next one up, I think we've probably got, you might have to see it. I think it's a Four. vibraphone. Oh, try it. No, harpsichord. Oh yes, try Okay, it. so the harpsichord isn't going to be touch sensitive because it's a ha uh, an instrument that plucks the string. Every sound will be the same volume. There's no pressing harder or lighter like you would have on a piano sound. But, um, but try something on the harpsichord, yeah. Brilliant, excellent. Now I think the next sound is probably the organ. So if you go to the plus one again, now I think we've got a jazz organ. Oh, no, vibraphone. Oh, yeah. Vib <laughs> so this is the vibraphone sound. <laughs> That's great. What was that clunk? <laughs> clunk in the head. Um, and then you go into organ. So there's, there's a jazz organ now. No, it's not. Church organ. <laughs> uh, and then we go into the church organ. Right, this is the I'll church play something organ churchy. Um. You said you were a church organist. This is your, this is your trial. <laughs> And you even get the echo when you let go of the notes. There's like a yeah. reverb mm. of like the sort of the church uh, ambience yeah, yeah, coming yeah. through, which is quite mm. nice. Try the next sound. I think the next sound is a jazz organ.
good sound, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And then the um, the final one, I think, is strings. If you just go to the last one, I think we've got the strings. We do want strings. Now, one of the things we can do with this piano, Helen, is to mix two sounds together. So we've got uh, 10 voices to choose from. Any two will play at the same time. So if we were to press the play, uh, the piano voice button, the second C up is your piano and the A above it is the string. So if you press them both together, then you should get piano strings. It's great for film music where the piano stays quite dominant and then the strings cuts through in the background. Another way you can use this is um, you can have two pianos together. So if you hold the piano voice and do the C and the C sharp, second C up and the C sharp, we'll get two pianos at an octave apart. So for someone beginning the piano, um, obviously they've got, they could get an old piano or they could get a keyboard or something like this, which would be a, a piece of furniture with all the digital benefits of not going out of tune and things. Is this a good option for them? Yes, I think so, yes. It's, uh, it's got a nice, nice feel to it. And do you notice the, the, the variation? Because the bottom keys are heavier, aren't they? And the top ones yeah, are lighter. Yeah, I, I like the, the sound of the bottom keys. <laughs> Is it lighter at the top? Yes. You do, okay. Yeah. And, and this has got uh, three variations in how hard you press the notes. So um, I expect that will change the tone as well as mm. the feel of it. Do you, do, you, do you kind of notice that at all? Or do you feel it variate the variants? The There's same? about three variations, but there is certainly variation. Touch. So compared to a real piano, it's got a lot of the same feel and touch mm. that you would expect on a real piano. Yes. We've got three pedals the same as a real, some grams pianos would have. A lot of acoustic uprights have three, but the middle one is for, for quietening it at night, whereas the grand piano has mm. a, a, a sostenuto pedal, which is what this has got. So it's got three pedals. Can you just go through what, what they cover, what they do? Yes. The right pedal, which is the damper pedal, or sometimes called the loud pedal, mm -hmm. it sustains everything you play while it's on, as long as it can last. It helps and that's the long notes, you just keep it on ringing yeah, on. it helps to play legato. If I played it without the pedal, then it wouldn't be joined. Yeah. <coughs> so that's that one. The middle one, the sostenuto one, you can uh, play a few notes, or one or two notes, and then put it down. And that those will hold on while you play other Short notes. Which are staccato if, if you let go of them. Okay. Play legato. So quite often in Debussy you get um, where some notes seem to be held on for a long time but with other harmonies going on on top. So okay. That's, oh, that's, that. oh, that's good. And what about the left hand pedal then? The left one is the soft pedal which <coughs> uh, on the grand piano it moves the action to the left so that the hammers are only playing one string instead of the three. So the, um, the direction for that is unicordical, which means one string in Italian, mm -hmm. 
And when you take it off, tray order back to three strings. Right, oh, that makes sense now, thank <coughs> you. So one of the features in this which I particularly like is a recording feature. And when um, someone's learning a new piece of music, what you can do is you can record in, let's say, your left hand first, and keep that playing back while you rehearse the right hand to go with it, or the other way around, whichever you're good at first. And it's quite a good learning tool because you can keep repeating this, this phrase or this, this song and then play along with it. So I'd, I'd quite like you to try that if you could. Okay. To record in, you press the record and the L for your left hand. And then it's just waiting to record. So whenever you start playing now, it will record you play your left hand in. Excellent. So if you press the play now, that should stop the recording. And then once it stops flashing, if you press it again, you'll be able to hear that back. Press play. Yeah. That's now recorded it. Now what we'll do is, <laughs> no hands, you stop it for a sec. And what we'll do now, we'll record the right hand to go along with it. So if you press the record again, and then press the right, the R part, second part. When you play now, as soon as you start, it will start, and it will allow you to record the part alongside the first part, okay? So we'll do the second track and see, see what you want to play, a jam over the top of it. Right, yeah. Are you happy with that? I think so. It's yeah. It's a bit of the beginning, maybe sounds a bit strange. But okay. So we can now play both parts together. So if you <coughs> press the play button now, mm -hmm. and then press it again, we'll hear both parts. Just the play. Nearest one to you. Oh yeah, I'm. Now the other thing you can do is you can even play over the top of that. So we've got those two oh, yeah. recorded. We could re-record any, but we could also pick a, a jazz organ or strings oh, yeah. and then play a, a third part with it. So it allows mm. you to improvise, which I think, it, would you say as a teacher, that's quite a good thing to get into? Very good, yes. Okay. You have the jazz exams now where you have to improvise over a given... In the exam page. itself. Mm. Okay, so, so this allows you to record two parts. Mm. They could be both hands together on each part, and then you could then improvise over the top. So it's quite quite good fun to play. So we've gone through various sounds on the piano and different things that it'll do. Um, what what was your favourite sound? What do you like about it? I've always loved the harpsichord sound on the, on these keyboards. So that's really good for baroque music. Yeah. Um, and the bass, as I said, bass has got a really nice tone. Mm -hmm. What about the record? You said you like the recording. Oh yes, the recording facility. Really Can you see that being useful? Huge benefit for practicing for pupils. Yes. Okay, <coughs> trying things out. And most of the Yamahas have got, in fact, I think they've all got it bar one now, the recording. Mm. So you could see that as a good benefit for yeah, people learning. Definitely, yes. Well, that's good, okay. Oh, thanks, Helen, for coming today. It's been great to listen to you play the Yamaha YDP 164. We'll try and get you back to play some other models if you would. That would be great. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you.